and welcome to Beck's Bug Out Survivor. Bit of tarping for you today. Sometimes it can be better than the tent because you can fit it in a smaller footprint if you like and it can go up in a multitude of different configurations. Now it's up to you if you prefer tarping or tenting but as this is a video all about the dynamics of actually lining your tarp that is what we're going to talk about today. There are plenty of videos on this channel about tents, however. Part of the dynamic of tarping, like I said, is that it can go up pretty much anywhere. As it goes, I could get a footprint of a really nice tent here, but we are talking about tarping. More than that, we're talking about how to set one up quickly for different configurations. Your tarp might be different. You might only have the one configuration that you prefer and you set your tarp up to that configuration and there's no need to change the lines at all. But what if you do like to change the configuration for your tarp and you want to do it quickly? It would usually mean undoing a knot that is on the perimeter tie out and then putting that line on another perimeter tie out to create a different configuration. So we're going to have a look at how you can do this really, really quickly. So nothing is pre-connected in here, but what if it's a nice sunny day and I want a lot of airflow, I could put it up as an A-frame, which would require different configurations and tie outs if I wanted to go up on a plough point to a tree which would come down on quite a steep angle like that and that is great for getting out of the wind and even getting your stove on to make some lunch cup of tea. Summertime you want the airflow and it sets up different. Of the time of recording this particular video it is pretty cold and I would prefer a tent because it is more enclosed but it doesn't mean you can't make a configuration that is equally as enclosed but let's have a look at this and I'll tell you what it is we're talking about but this is only a video about how we can change configurations very very quickly so I'm using the DD 3x3 it's more than 800 grams I could actually get a tent 800 grams if you want to spend the money but this is only about 35 40 quid so pay money take a chance but let's have a look inside it this is what we're talking about i do have a little footprint made out of an old ipk sheet and it just protects my air pad so let's get that down there This is the 3x3 and in it is pretty much everything I need without using carabiners and it's a knot system. Now if you want to use carabiners go right ahead. This is a kind of equipment that I'd have inside a tarp. First of all some ground anchors. These are the MSR ground hogs and mine are pre-connected to jungle knots like this. I have six. I could easily put ten in. I've moved to this location for this part of the video. Now if you were here expecting to see multiple configurations of the tarp, you're not going to see that here. Instead what you're going to see are techniques. Techniques to get the line onto the perimeter quickly and to take it off quickly without tying a knot and really no toddles either. I want to see how quick I can get this line onto the perimeter and we will use a hitch so let's have a look at how we're going to hitch onto the perimeter webbing of a tarp like this but sometimes the environment predicts how it is you're going to set your tarp up not you. In this scenario we are going to pretend that I don't want it in an A-frame, but I want it in a diamond plough point configuration. Nothing has been added to these webbings. 
with this cheap cord if I just get a section and bend it over like that that's about maybe seven or eight inches there that is called the bite I get that section pull it through the webbing reach inside and bring all that through and here we have the hank and because of the way it's hanked I can pull all that through I'm slowing this right down so you can see but when I pull it'll actually tighten up to that webbing now there's no knot and yet that will hold that will hold and that is up to the tree as quick as that what if the wind takes a turn or the environment changes or I just want more concealment and I don't want it on the corner to make either a plow point configuration and I don't want it on the corner of the top I just take off where we tied in I just loosen it and the minute it comes loose it comes off there's no knot tying so that was the corner of the top there I can actually put this on without feeding the line which we're going to show you now so let me just get a bit of cord to a tree so what do I mean usually all this line has to go through a loop let's find the ridge okay found the ridge here is the ridge webbing here usually I would have to get the line here and put it through the webbing of the top and start pulling all this through and put it up to the tree and lock in that is locked in from this point I can make a variety of configurations such as a nice little plow point the plow point is nice because it's quick it offers a lot of wind resistance obviously I'd have it a lot higher than this certainly up here overhead height but every time I want to break camp I have to feed this loop however if you want to break camp in a hurry if you're stealth camping it can be time consuming and I'll do a follow-up video to this because I know a lot of people will kind of see their arse about it if you're not sliding your tarp from side to side if all you want to do is put a ridge line from one tree to the other and put prussics on that ridge line so you can slide your tarp from left to right you're watching the wrong channel I, I won't do that because there's over 1.2 million videos just on that topic alone I don't think you need one more person adding to that I think my viewers would rather just see something a little different just turn the page of the book a lot of people watching YouTube are stuck on the same page so I don't want to feed this line through the tarp webbing instead I'm only going to put a bite through it let's have a top view see what we're talking about so I make my loop with my right hand here see how I make that loop now watch this in my right hand it's very important that I cross under reach inside pull a loop now that is secure what's the difference between this and feeding it through unlike feeding it through if I just pull the 550 paracord it falls off the line so give that a good tug and as you can see the actual tarp fell off and yet it was secure and I didn't have to feed all the line 
through like this. And then when I needed to take it down, I didn't need to feed all the line back like this. It's not a really quick way of doing it if you have, say, 10 metres of cord. Instead, off the tree, through. Remember, don't make this loop and put it through. Make sure it comes underneath the line that's already on the tree. Once you've done that, that is tight. That is not going anywhere. I'm holding the webbing and I'm holding the line off the tree. But the minute I grab the 550 cord and just give that a tug, it comes off. The whole tarp comes off and I didn't have any feeding to do. To tie to the actual tree, I suppose what I could do and what I've seen a lot of people do is to make a more permanent loop like this. Now you feed the whole line again through the loop. So what I'm doing is eliminating the need to feed line through the loop when all I have to do is come around the tree and then learn a different kind of knot, Siberian hitch, like this. Plenty of videos for you to learn. I'm not going to show it you on this. But there you go, and I can break down equally as quick. But I'll show you very, very quickly. Short tail is in my right hand. The long tail is in the left. Just get a couple of fingers and loop a full rotation on the right hand. Comes under the left hand line. And with the right hand, I make a loop. Loop through a loop, tighten it all up and then up to the tree and it releases just as quick it's easier actually doing it quickly there you have it to break camp i'm not feeding a line through the loop instead i'm just pulling the tail and it all comes down or should we use a proper one let's use just an ordinary loop like that and a stone so what was once a prusik to slide your top left and right because some of you can't find the middle or something. I find it quite odd, yet alone pathetic. Corner. Stone. And this gives an extra pegging point or guy out point where ordinarily there wasn't a bit of tape like that. I can get my prusik that was formerly on the ridge and what I do is make Mickey Mouse ears first which is folding down and up to make a letter P put that over both of them and tighten up and now I'm going to show you that again obviously a lot closer but there you have it so let's see how I use the prusik to do that Seen from a different angle, pop my stone where I desire the extra tie out. This is my prusik. I have the knot down here. Mickey Mouse ears is where I bend the top down like that. You can see it makes Mickey Mouse ears. Mickey Mouse ears just bend the top of the loop. Then I want to this one on the left, twist it like this and test whether it bites. I'm going to show you that again. I'm not very good at explaining knots. Apologies. Bend the top down to make Mickey Mouse ears. Let's give you this view here. This on the left, bring around and it should make a letter P which tightens down on itself. I'm going to pop behind that stone that is already in the top and pull tight, have that extra peg point. 
So that is how I use a Prusik when it's not in a mode for being a Prusik to make into an extra tie out. So this is what the video is about. It's connecting your line to any perimeter point without tying it. You can use a lark's head hitch, which we shown right at the beginning. Your Prusik then transforms itself with an aid of a pebble, an acorn, stone, stick, anything, to make an extra point where you haven't ordinarily got anywhere to lash to on your perimeter. Now I have this here, which is a peg, and it is on jungle knots like that all the way down and it's connected on all the time and to connect to a webbing here's a webbing on the perimeter bring it through just like any other jungle knot and then bring the knot into one of the loops on the jungle knot and under tension that's not going anywhere and i didn't tie anything again i didn't tie anything so in an emergency winds change direction i need to change configurations i take the loop out of the jungle knot like that let's have a look at that a little closer this peg is always pre-connected to the jungle knot there is a knot of the jungle going through the perimeter and you can see a series of loops now if i just open up this loop with my right hand index finger and on my left hand index finger the knot pop the knot through the loop now that will hold like you won't believe that is incredibly tight because it's under its own tension i could use any of these loops i could put the knot lower down say in this loop here so the knot through the loop and under tension that is not going anywhere but what if i want to put two together because this is only a short piece if you do happen to want a longer bit of cord to peg out you just take two jungle knots and the different knot goes on to a different loop on a different peg point like that on a different peg and there you have it peg there peg there i can pull and all i've done is pushed the loop and put it over the knot like that now i have two there's about four foot there and i never ever lose my groundhogs ever again i'm sick of losing them could you go lighter than this a cush cam cush cam if you do want to see something a little lighter then i do have videos on my channel using pretty much the same techniques but lighter kit i can use a dyneema cord i also have a silk poly this is polyester but if you want to see it, a silk nylon called the super lights are that is on the channel too for you to see i don't want to recreate videos where all i'm doing is putting up a line and doing this sliding the top from left to right the reason why originally you're putting up a tree to tree ridge line is not because you can slide your top left and right that is a byproduct of what it is the intention behind your tree to tree ridge line is let me explain if you have watched enough of my videos you will definitely know that i can put my tarp up with two separate lines one on the head one on foot stretch it out get all the tension i want so why have a tarp is it purely to move left and right well obviously not but there are people who believe that's its sole function the reason we have a mono line from one tree to the other here is because we have deadfall. These 
or huge bits of debris that may fall from a tree and you put yourself a safety line up and that is what originally the whole function was about because even something relatively small coming down that way on to your noodle you know it's going to break your skull open you're going to be dead so think of your tree to tree ridge line as a safety line against debris deadfall the fact that somebody has learnt to tie prussics and then add the tarp to their safety line is is genius you can actually affix your tarp and yes you can move it left and right but it's not the sole function of the line that goes tree to tree you can put your tarp up on just two bits of cord one on the head one on the foot as i do but i haven't got the safety barrier then from deadfall because i've only got the tarp to deflect the things that might be falling from up there luckily this is okay i'm looking to see if everything is green and it is everything is good here but over there there's quite a big deadfall that's come straight down this is actually a real life example look at the size of this this has come in feet first as it were and gee it is heavy even the safety line wouldn't do anything to protect me from this it's actually heavy look at the circumference of that there even a proper safety line wouldn't have helped me with anything that size i see a lot of people putting a paracord tree to tree ridge line so they can slide the top as if that's its only function and in fact this cheap paracord stuff that your bracelet is made from like that there is no way in hell that that is going to deflect any kind of debris from up there if you're unlucky real paracord real actual paracord i have some it is from parachute uh, for cargo cargo such as tanks armored vehicles personnel carriers and they dropped from the back of a c-130 and we have about i should imagine 30 shoots for one tank and the cord is about that thick it's six mil that is proper parachute cord and somebody once had a great idea of having this six mil thick cord putting it between two trees and that would increase your survival a little this kind of parachute cord here will do absolutely nothing to deflect deadfall at all nothing you may as well just rely on your tarp or your basher to deflect the smaller debris and there's only one guy i've seen on youtube who will use the thicker parachute cord wow look at sun so somebody made a youtube video replicating paracord but they used the thin stuff for your bracelet you wouldn't trust your life to it seriously you wouldn't until next time take care of yourself and see you out there happy trials